Karen Bryant for M. Mejita. I'm here with Chael Sonnen. He is the people's champion, of course, of the middleweight division. I'm curious, does that come with a people's belt? Uh, it certainly should, shouldn't it? But no, unfortunately not. That piece of tin is still out in Brazil, but I'm going to claim it real soon. Well, you've been kind of going on a little bit of a victory lap. We've seen more of you lately than we have in, in quite some time. So how has life been since the win over Brian Stan? Uh, I mean, life's, life's the same for me every day. My dog wakes me up way too early and wants to go for a walk. I work out a couple times a day, coach the kids, and take care of stuff in between. So my, my life never changes. It's the same every day. And did you think that that fight was was a, something that you needed to prove to people? I mean, you were very uh, definitive in your victory in that. Do you think that that was something that you you know put a stamp on your on your point that you should be next again for Anderson? Well, there's no question who's next, you know, for for the championship. There there, there is nobody else, and there's no argument. Um, and if they want to protect him, you know, and his side doesn't want to do the fight, I can understand that. But as as far as who the best middleweight in the world is, there's no debate. So, yeah, you think, I mean, you've obviously been very, very outspoken about it. You think he's ducking, you think he's running. Well, I know he's ducking and running. I call him out, he stays in his seat. Look, he's not from a culture that does that. You challenge a Brazilian to a fight, you're going to be fighting him. It's much like me. You challenge me to a fight, you're not going to do it twice because we will be fighting right now. I call him out and he covers his mouth like a little fancy boy. I mean, what is that? You know, if Joe Rogan hadn't taken the mic out of my hand, what I would have said is, Anderson, I want your answer. If you accept my terms, I'll wait till February. And if you don't, I'm going to whip your ass right here in Houston right now. Well, I talked to Dane about it yesterday and, you know, whether or not that fight was going to happen. And he, he seems to be leaning toward it. I mean, is that what you're hearing that you think is going to happen? I think the fight's going to happen, but I, I'm, not, I'm not losing sleep over it either way. Look, I'm not a bully. If a guy doesn't want to fight, I'm not going to continue to tell him to fight. Um, it, it, you know, if he's got his reasons and he doesn't want to fight, well, then I don't want to fight him either. Uh, the problem is he's got a belt that I want. So he can surrender that belt and hand it over, or I'm going to come and take it. But either way, I'm taking that championship belt. We don't have to fight. I, I would much rather settle this diplomatically. But these are my terms. Give me the belt or I'm going to come take it. And but, okay, but you say you're not being a bully, but I mean, you, you but, but, but in a way you are with, the, with how uh, verbal you've been and, and, and the challenges. And, and it, it does seem like you're, you know, grabbing him by the collar saying, let's do this, let's make this happen. And it, it's not a polite request that you've made, dear Anderson, may I please play you for the belt, I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, it's my belt and he's holding it, so I don't think I need to be polite, you know. He has something that belongs to me. Uh, you know, the other side of it is, what a phony. You know, I got to sit back and hear that this guy's won 13 fights in the UFC. Well, give me his schedule. I'll go beat all those 13 guys. He beat a math teacher to win the championship, so they rematched him against the same math teacher that he just beat. I mean, how hard is it to rack up 13 wins? when you're doing it that way. So you don't think Rich Franklin is, is that great? All I'm saying is this. You give me his 13 guys, I'll beat them all in the same day. I don't need six years span to do it. Okay. Well, so if you don't get the Anderson fight, who do you think should be next for you then? Well, you know, I don't look at it like that way. You know, you, you get all of these fighters that uh, most of them have never even opened a book, let alone read one, that pretend to be these geniuses and, well, my career and blah, blah, blah. Screw your career. Are you a fighter or not? I don't think about the next move because I don't control the next move. I don't have an office at the UFC headquarters with, with my name on it, on the door, you know? Uh, these guys that, that, that try to ponder and pay, I don't care. The octagon's the same size. I'll fight any one of them and the rest of the guys should do the same too or get out of the way because you're not a real fighter well dana did say that you know in reference to to anderson's you know dissatisfaction with the way that you've been asking for the fight he said well hey if you're that if you're that mad about it you should just get in the cage and, and punch him in the mouth basically yeah i mean you know that's the bottom line you know i say stuff about anderson uh, in an attempt to pick a fight he goes and tattles on me he calls dana and tattles on me and says this is what chael just said can you believe it and i think dana's in the same spot it's me going, well, Anderson, we can do something about that. You know, if you got a problem with this guy, as it turns out in this industry, I can help you do something about that. And, you know, again, he wants to sit there and, and, and fight with guys like Bisping. He called out Michael Bisping. Are you aware of that? Okay, when you're the champion, you don't call people out. You get called out. When you're the champion, you take on all comers. You don't point your finger, you know, like this is a Don King promotion and we're trying to protect guys. You know, you fight all comers. The second thing, Anderson's supposedly, uh, you know, on the injured list. You know, it's, oh, I got this bad shoulder. What are you calling guys out while you're hurt for? You know, the first guy to ever call someone out while hurt is Vitor. And now Anderson's like, oh, I'll just call somebody while I'm hurt too, you know. 
It's like I had this run in with Vandalay one time. He gets in the car, he's on a cane, he can barely stand, and then he wants to point a finger in my chest, you know, while he's an invalid. It's like, I, you know, I guess, I, you know, you guys are these tough guys on TV and behind the scenes, you're just a bunch of wimps. Well, speaking of Vitor, you guys had a little bit of a Twitter exchange going back and forth. Uh, you know, Vitor saying he, he, he'd love to kick your ass too, but, you know, believes that you should actually get the fight with Anderson before he does. So, what, you know, how, how do you feel about Vitor? Obviously, not so great, right? Yeah, well, I, you know, and not bad either. Uh, you know, I mean, good for Vitor. If he wants a fight, he should come out and ask for it. I, I do the same thing. Um, uh, you know, but unlike Anderson, I will fight you, Vitor. You know, if, if, if you want a piece of me, it's as simple as, as just say my name. You know, I'm like Destiny's Child. Say my name, baby. Just say my name. I'll be there. <laughs> I remember that song. That was good. <laughs> say my name. Say my name. Hey, you're moving. That's know, pretty good. It's not bad. That's not, not bad. Hurt. So, so, your so. It's better than me singing, though. I'll tell you, Karen. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, Chell, let's talk about what, what you do in the, in the downtime. Is there a time when you're not training? What do you do for fun? What's fun for you, you know, other than, than, than calling people out and kicking some butt? Everybody wants to know what old Chell does. Yes. I do as I damn well please. That's what I do. Okay, well that's that's pretty good. So what do you what do you do you know while you're in Vegas? Are you a gambler? Uh, you know I like to gamble, but um, I don't do a whole lot. I usually hang out in the room. Um, uh, you know I like Vegas a lot, um, but I don't do a whole lot. I kind of just like to see. I'm more of a people watcher, I guess is what you call that. I like to sit back and, and and take it all in, but I'm not always part of it. I'm, I'm more of an outsider. But um, you know I'm a big fan. It's it's more fun. You know, I love to go to the fights more than I love to participate in the fights. So I'm looking forward to this weekend. It's a great card, as always. And, uh, you know, Penn and Diaz, what are you going to do? That's that's amazing. That's a dream fight. Who would have thought a year ago, you know? Uh, uh, Diaz was over in strike force. Whoever would have thought they'd have matched up. So I'm having a good time. Well, good. And I, and obviously there's a lot of fans around here. Do you? Is there one thing that you hear the most from fans, either positively or negatively? Oh, I only hear positive things. I, I, I've never been insulted by a fan uh, and it would be okay if you did insult me that's you buy a ticket you can do whatever you want you, you don't have to cheer you can also boo but uh, uh, no I mean I like to meet the fans and say hello and uh, we got a lot of Canadian fans in town I keep meeting people I hear a little something in their accent I say hey where are you from and we got I mean people from Ireland people from Germany but we, there's a lot of Canadian fans I mean the, the, the support and the size of the sport in Canada is is unbelievable well and dane even said too he's looking to take it around the world even more places india china you know back to brazil again japan it's it's, it's pretty amazing oh i totally agree yeah you know when when he made this prediction years ago of, of the places that the ufc was going to go you know i knew dane was a capable guy and i knew he had this big vision but I thought he was overstepping. I didn't think he could get to where he said he could get as quickly as he could get there. Um, you know, so, I mean, he's one of these guys, he, he puts out these, these what appear to be outlandish statements, and then he pulls through. He comes through with it, you know. I mean, the guy is so capable, and he works so many hours, you know, he can accomplish more than, than, than the average man, that's for sure. How do you think you do as a politician? As a pol Well, I was in public office, I know, yeah. and, and I left public office the only way a person should. In handcuffs. <laughs> awesome. Well, Chael, I hope the fight with Anderson Silva happens, and I hopefully it's you know a big something big, you know, Super Bowl weekend type thing, and 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 hopefully it's on Fox. Well, I don't. I, I hope that he he takes my warning. I hope he mails me that belt, and we forget this whole thing. It'll be a lot less painful. All right, Chael. Thanks for taking the time. My pleasure.